All right, we're working on a little project here. I figured I'd, uh, I'd try and document this since I didn't when I did it on, uh, on my Ranger. But uh, we're working on an 06 here, but it's pretty much the uh, same process for uh, any, any single overhead cam, even, even an Explorer too, really the same deal. But anyhow, what we're doing here is we're replacing the timing chain tensioners. Uh, it's going to do the top one and the, uh, and the one in the back too. Uh, the first thing we do is we took the uh, we already took the throttle body and the whatever that other thing's called uh, the breather tube. We took that off. There's a little funky clip here. Gotta get that. And then uh, the other thing we did we drained the coolant out uh, just low enough so it's down below the thermostat housing because we're, we're gonna have to take that off. So uh, we'll update you when we get some more work done. We we took the thermostat housing out, and uh, if you really need to see how to do that, you can go see my thermostat housing video. And uh, you'll know how to do that. But once you get the thermostat housing out, then the, the tensioner is right in there, threads right into the side of the head there. And uh, we had the 27 millimeter deep socket around here somewhere. We use that. And uh, yeah, there it is. You only get that out so far. Once you get it out uh, too far, it starts to run into the manifold. And then you got to take it out by hand. But all right, so here's the, uh, the tensioners here. And we, we were looking at the one that came out. It, it's, it's tough to say. Like, like they say, you're supposed to replace them every, every 70,000 or so. Or at least that's what the one guy said. But we were looking at the check valve. We couldn't tell if there was something in there plugging it up or not. Or uh, who knows. But hopefully this, this will solve the problem. And then what we did is we, we primed that one up. This is like the most important thing you got to do with these things. Because uh, the one how-to on here on YouTube, it doesn't show that. So you got to prime them up. We just had a... Uh, container of oil there <laughs> and uh, we we pumped them up and basically all you do is you just submerge the tensioner oil and then pump it up like that until it gets uh, so that you can't even compress it at all anymore and uh, that's about it so we're gonna go ahead and uh, and put it back in and make sure same thing putting it back in you can't use the socket right away otherwise you cross thread it. and uh, then you'll have a whole nother problem going on so we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated. Alright we're trying to put this uh, tensioner in and uh, first. <laughs> <laughs> what you got to do here is kind of put. We, what we did is we took an extension, and so we're kind of trying to keep pressure on it while we uh, while we screw it in. Trying not to cross the right. <laughs> well, now you'll know what to expect when you do your tensioners. But anyhow, this uh, this other one down here was actually a whole lot easier. It took me about five minutes. Oh, yeah, brag went on. There's a. Uh, the mud flap gets in the way, so I used a uh, just a universal. It's the same size, 27 millimeter, and uh, so I took the old one up, I primed it up in the oil, and then uh, it went right back in. And uh, I'm going to torque it down to about 60 foot pounds. I don't know how accurate the torque's going to be with uh, all these extensions and, and, and universals on there, but <laughs> I'm still going to go for about 60 foot pounds. And uh, if it leaks, we'll make it a little tighter. All right, making a uh, side trip here. What we're, what we're doing is something we actually had to do with uh, my truck when I did it. We're going to chop off the end of the old tensioner here, and that way we'll be easily, hopefully, able to screw this one in uh, straight. That way the threads will be nice and clean. And then, uh, then we're going to try and put the other one in again. <laughs> uh, we're pretty sure we got this in straight there. It's, it's looking good. No, we, uh, well, <laughs> for the we're not sure of anything. We're, we're not too sure, but we're sure enough. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, crank it down, send it in there. It's not our truck. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't care. <laughs> we don't care if this thing oh, yeah, is screwed up. Good. All right, looks like, uh, looks like it's threading in there straight. The fact that we got it this far, this is, uh, this is the point of no return here. So, send it home, buddy. Cross threading like a mofo. I can't remember if I mentioned or not. That's uh, 60 foot pounds we're putting on that, and uh, you know if it leaks, go tighter. There's 40. Uh, yeah. That's a problem. <laughs> That's all right. Tell me on the toilet back. No startup rattle at all. Wow. No rattle at idle, that's a good sign. Yeah. 
Yeah, I heard. I heard it made some noise. That didn't sound like chains though. No, it's, it made some other noise. Yeah. Probably like a heat shield shaking or something. Yeah.